Hello, this is Timo. I tried to do this video already several times, but I don't know how to do it. I will just try it again now. Um, I want to show you Loris and X, basically the first steps how to use it. And so what is it? It's a fantasy console. Um, you mean... Maybe you know what a fantasy console is already, but it's kind of an emulator for an old game console, for an old game console, but the actual game console never existed, so it's, well, fantasy. And this one you can program in BASIC, the good old classic 8-bit computer BASIC, but another dialect maybe. And the special thing about Loris and Acts is that it really works like an old 8-bit system, well, like an old 8-bit console, video game console, because they worked a little bit different than most of the old computers, and also than, different than most of the other fantasy consoles. Um, so yeah, how... I mean, the fantasy console doesn't exist, but how would it look like if it existed? It would be a handheld console, just like a Game Gear, for example, and it would use cartridges. So there's a ROM inside, and you will see later on that this is quite useful. And we have a touch screen, which is 160 by 128 pixels, and we can con connect a second game controller, so you can play with two players. And a special thing is, you could slide up the screen and there would be a keyboard below it. So this is doesn't exist, but if you program for it, you can imagine that you're programming for this thing here. So let's have a look at the application. Basically, there's nothing to see because you just open directly the programs. These are the .nx files, and they're like the cartridges for the console. Let's have a look at Loris Galaxy, for example. You can play you can play it with the cursor keys and the Z and the X button. Later I think I will implement real game controller support support, but for now that's it. And also it's possible to make text adventures using the keyword. Okay. So let's now program Hello World. Um, there is no editor integrated in Loris NX, so you have to use your, well, any text editor. And that's right. Print Hello World and save it. as hello world dot nx so we can now try it and here it is it's a little bit boring so let's try something with a keyboard input your name hello and this variable Your name, Timo. Hello, Timo. Okay, let's go back. Now we want to add a sprite to this program. All the graphics in Loris and X are based on 8x8 pixel characters. And there is a program for it, and it's called Character Designer. It will ask you now on which program or on which file you want to edit the data. So you select Hello World. And here's the editor. Here you have an area to draw a character. On the bottom you can choose between, well, you can create several characters. And, well, 
you can clear it with a color and color. For example, let's create a little character. So, now we can copy and paste it to a second character and change it a little bit so we have an animation. And we save it. Now if we go back to the text editor, you see I destroyed everything, but almost. I forgot to save before. So you see now that in the X and the NX file includes not only the source code of the program, but also the assets. This is binary data, which can be used for quite anything you would like. In this case, now we have the characters here and you can save up to 16 data entries here. In the end, there are the data on the cartridge ROM, so you have direct access to it later. Now we want to show the sprite and we have the sprite command for this. Sprite number zero, this is the position on the screen and we want to show character number one. This is what you see here in the editor. It shows you on the bottom, this is number one. Let's try it. And this is really boring. But at least you see the sprite. So let's animate it. Anyway, we already made two characters for the animation. For the animation, we need a loop. We create this do loop. Here we write something. Um, what am I doing? Mod. Uh, so we get different characters depending on the time and we will wait for the next frame, otherwise it will be too fast. I don't know why I closed it, but anyway. So here it is, he's moving. He or she, I don't know what it is. Um, hello world, here it is. So let's try to move it with a gamepad to make it a bit more interesting. We have to activate the gamepad in this case for one player. We create some, create some variables for the position. And in the loop we check the, the gamepad. This is for up. And we change the variables down left. <coughs> Sorry, right. That's it. Let's try it. And now you can move it using the cursor keys. The next step is we want to add a background for this, but I will do this in the next video, so please come back. See you soon.